Today we're talking to Isis Tana, uh, ASX code ICE, with a market cap of around 10 million. Matt, welcome back to, welcome back to the network. Great to be here, Paul. Thanks for having me. Matt, we only caught up with you uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, we were talking about uh, a new contract that you signed with the, uh, uh, with, the, with the Sydney Opera House. In that same interview, we also touched uh, on uh, what, area, or what area was driving your business the most, what, what part of that business, and correct me if I'm wrong, you said it was the, the shopping mall, mall business. And lo and behold, today, uh, you announced a, a, a new deal, a, a hardware deal with uh, one of your largest clients in the, in the Middle East. Can you talk to us about this deal and what it means for the company? Absolutely. So this is this has been a long-term customer for Isatana. We signed a three-year software deal with them uh, a few months ago and announced that. And now separately, uh, we've announced a deal to supply them with hardware. Now, we are a software company, so hardware is not necessarily right in our ballpark. But what's interesting is this supports our new product. So uh, the customer needs to transition to this uh, fancy new AI-capable hardware, and we're helping them uh, by delivering that hardware. So whilst it will bump up our revenues quite dramatically this year, it's not annualised recurring revenue, but it's really good money for us and uh, a reasonable margin uh, to boot. So from a cash flow perspective and from a relationship perspective, we're really happy with the deal. We're also happy because this hardware typically lasts five or six years, so we're hoping uh, we can go well beyond that three-year contract with that customer uh, on the hardware. So Matt, obviously the, uh, the, the the new new software, the new platform that you've been rolling out clearly is having an impact to winning more contracts. Are we going to see more news on this uh, with, with other parties over the coming months? Absolutely. So existing customers are consistently asking us to move over to the new platform, which we're very encouraging of because, uh, you know, it's so much stronger. Uh, but aside from that, our engagement level with uh, new prospects uh, using a paid pilot relationship where we ask the customer to pay us for three months in advance to test out what they think about the product. We've now run 10 paid pilots and seven of them have converted into 12 month contracts. The other three are still out there because they haven't finished their three months. So, you know, um, the strike rate is extraordinary uh, for new customers taking on this product. Once they experience it firsthand, it's very hard for them to give it back to us. Uh, so that's one of the reasons we're so excited and have gone out with this capital raise. So Matt, let's let's talk about the cap raise. You're currently in in a trading halt. Can you tell us uh, more about the capital raise? How much you're uh, you're you're uh, you're raising, and then any other details? Sure. So we've done a private placement of just under two million dollars. Uh, the largest participants are our three largest shareholders, which is really heartening because. Uh, one of them, Skip Tan, hasn't invested since before the IPO. So it's the first time they've reached in their pocket and contributed. Uh, we've got a big step up from uh, Lance East office, which is the office of Lawrence Escalante, uh, as well as our, our technical and, and commercial partners out of Japan, Magnica, who have uh, increased their stake quite dramatically with this private placement. Now, concurrent with that, we've also announced a a share purchase plan. So all of our retail investors who uh, held stock on Tuesday evening uh, will be able to participate in that. And we'd very much encourage them to think about coming on board. Um, one of the other nice things about this particular capital raise is we're doing it at a premium to our five-day uh, VWAP. So uh, that's a pretty unusual thing in the market to be issuing shares at a bit of a premium to market price. Uh, uh, that took a bit of negotiations, but we're really proud to have got it away. So Matt, look, clearly uh, you're sending a strong uh, message to, to the market. It's great to see that ex existing investors can see the, clean the, see the change of the wind with Isotana and are keen to, uh, to buy uh, uh, more shares. And just as importantly, you know, uh, you, you've got an SPP that you're doing that uh, uh, enables uh, other retail shareholders to, uh, to invest if, uh, if, uh, if they want to. I certainly hope so. And Matt, just to finish up, the uh, Middle East uh, conglomerate is clearly a key strategic customer for the company. How much more business do you see coming from uh, the Middle East uh, going forward? So that, that particular company has, I think, 16 shopping malls with us, roughly 8,000 cameras operating with Isotana currently. We believe with the new product, there's substantial opportunity to expand with them. They have other malls that are smaller uh, in, in uh, camera count and uh, that there are numerous other opportunities with them. We believe once they experience the new product, we'll have a really strong opportunity to expand that relationship uh, in the future. I don't expect that within the next few months, but certainly over the course of the coming 12 months, uh, we would be looking proactively to increase our engagement with them. We're also rolling out with another large Middle Eastern shopping mall conglomerate based in Kuwait right now. Uh, and we're you know deploying a thousand cameras at a time in some of those shopping malls. So that's a very, very large deployments and utilising our new product, which gets us very excited. 
Matt, many thanks for your time today. Clearly a lot of good things happening at uh, uh, Isis China and uh, I suspect we'll be catching up uh, in the not too distant future. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paul. Great to be on the show.